And we will move to the first debate of the evening, which the Whips have agreed will be the motion on government welfare reforms. Um, I now call upon councillors Mrs. L. Cooper and Belton to move and second their motion. Formally. Cooper and Ellis uh, and Mrs. Cooper can speak up to 10 minutes, but I'll be very, very grateful for brevity. Thank you. To a series of government measures um, that will affect people who need uh, support to afford to live here in Wandsworth. Uh, so in a sense it's a debate about the sort of place we'd like to live. Um, let's start with the views of two residents, um, neither one a known socialist, the Director of Housing and the Director of Finance. Um, in paper 12689, which hopefully um, we've read, they conclude that these measures will affect thousands of residents. Um, they'll increase arrears, you'll see an increase in evictions and unfortunately homelessness as well. And the bundle of reforms <coughs> will cost um, more than £7 million a year in rent that we won't be able to collect as well. So it's an important debate and I hope we can have a reasoned debate about it. Um, I hope we can engage the residents and I think the residents do deserve more than just we're not going to cut anything versus something has to be done. Um, and while I think this is a badly intentioned paper and will have awful consequences, I'm willing um, to put three straight statements out there at the start. Um, I do think housing benefit has gone out of control. Um, I do agree with the principle of a benefit cap um, and I do think there is too much fraud in the current system. Um, to take these in turn, uh, housing benefit is out of control. It's absolutely sinful that £20 billion a year is given to landlords that would be much better invested in bricks and mortar. And remember that housing benefit itself is just a sticking plaster used by successive uh, governments of both col colours um, to avoid actually building the homes that we should have. Um, and now that we've torn away that sticking plaster, in Wandsworth there's more than 500 three and four bedroom affordable houses that are exposed. And the landlords of these properties not being charities will, most likely over time, either return them to market rent or sell them on. Now that will mean some of our residents will present themselves as homeless or have to leave the area. But also, crucially, that we're going to lose dozens and dozens of family-sized units forever from our affordable housing supply. Um, so the question is, what steps has the council taken to negotiate with these landlords and are we reaching out to our residents? Are we as councillors reaching out to our residents rather than waiting for them to present themselves to us? Um, on the benefits cap, I do agree that no family should live a better life long term on benefits than the family next door that works every hour God sends. But any national cap, whether a salary or a benefit cap, needs a serious London waiting. Um, a search today for a two-bedroom flat in Battersea under the £290 housing benefit cap turned up no properties. Um, the universal credit cap of £500 a week per family, including their housing costs, makes sense in Plymouth, but it doesn't make sense in Putney. The most obvious impact of setting caps at these levels will, I'm afraid, be to exclude low-income families from living in certain parts of London. Why not? Um, lobby the government to set these caps at Wandsworth or London averages. Um, and finally, there's too much fraud in the system. Uh, there is. I'm cooperating with the Housing Department on a case at present. But this paper contains no anti-fraud measures. It is a policy that targets legitimately claimed benefits uh, in the depths of a recession. And these reforms will end the situation where, you know, the children live in a housing association uh, property in my street and they get to talk to uh, the lawyer who lives in one side and the accountants who live on the other. We want to make social housing something people truly aspire to, not qualify for, but this measure will intensify uh, the poverty we have on our estates. Government should be moving housing subsidy from landlords toward bricks and mortar and we should focus relently, relentlessly on housing delivery and getting skills and job opportunities for our residents. A housing stimulus is a good way out of a recession and a good job is the only way out of poverty. However you vote tonight, I would encourage all members to investigate these issues in your own wards. Every ward is affected. Um, there are people out there who will need your support and protection. Thank you.
Uh, I assure you I will not be going much over five minutes. Um, in fact, Councillor Hogg and I agree on a lot of the things, so um, as I prepared my speech, I shall read it. Um, I'm sure we'll hear much tonight about fairness, about welfare systems that protect the vulnerable who need the kind of safety net that any civilised society worthy of its name must provide. But beverage, and of course he's been in the news a lot recently as it's the 70th year since the beverage report, espoused principles that parties on both sides of this chamber subscribe to. He would be appalled by today's welfare state. The slide began with Labour, but in truth, both parties have over the last 40 years played an equal part in its demise, however well-intentioned. I think Councillor Hogg referred to that. The five giant evils on the road to reconstruction were want, disease, ignorance, squalor and idleness. The last one is easily overlooked, but policies that encourage the wrong kind of behaviour and do not reward those who work hard, play fair and abide by the rules are wrong. And again, I'm agreeing there with Councillor Hogg. Specifically though, Labour's motion loses sight of the bigger picture. To quote Beveridge, Social security must be achieved by cooperation between the state and the individual, with the state securing the service and contributions. The state should not stifle incentive, opportunity, responsibility in establishing a national minimum. It should leave room and encouragement for voluntary action by each individual to provide more than that minimum for himself and his or her family. Listen to these words. Something for something means reward for those who are desperately trying to do the right thing, saving for the future and trying to build a stable, secure home. Right now, these families are offered too little reward and incentive in social housing and long-term savings for the kind of behaviour that is the bedrock of a decent society. Not my words, but the words of Liam Byrne, Shadow Secretary of State for Works and Pensions, the man who famously wrote... I'm afraid there's no money. When he left his job as Chief Secretary to the Treasury, that is where we are today and why the government has had to look at welfare reform. We have no money. Although the Andrew Marsh Show on Sunday had both agreed that the welfare system is in need of reform, Labour still appear fairly out of step with public opinion. Their agenda, a product of political calculation, not high moral purpose. For the eighth time last week, they voted against a cap on benefits. Housing benefit has now risen to £20 billion a year. Yes, £20 billion a year must fall, and Councillor Hogg did agree with that. Surely it is a benefit if people vacate under-occupied homes, allowing those suffering overcrowding to have a decent home. And if they wish to keep their large accommodation, all these new regulations ask is that people of working age work a few hours extra every week or take in a lodger to pay for their surplus bedrooms. Indeed, the council has already written to all the affected tenants and suggested this. Why should those on low wages subsidise spare bedrooms for others? Let's be truthful here. The people affected by the reforms are those capable of working, not the sick nor the elderly. And may I remind my fellow councillors that the majority of our tenants living in under-occupied accommodation are the elderly. They will not be affected, but I wish we could encourage them to downsize, because I want our overcrowded families to have the same opportunities that they, the elderly, had when they were young. They had that, and they had decent living conditions. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's an argument for another day. I'm sure our tenants who received the letter were shocked, and I can sympathise with them. They didn't expect to get a letter like this. But again, the letter stressed if people were worried, they should contact the council and talk their troubles through. <coughs> Excuse me. I actually have seen the letter that's been sent out, and I would have suggested everybody ask the department for a copy of the letter. Our officers are always willing to work with vulnerable households. I've made inquiries and been assured that just because supporting funding will be cut does not mean that all of a sudden the accommodation t disappears for some form of temporary use. It will still be there and we have the potential to negotiate some form of continued use. There will be no reduction in units proposed for drug services or domestic violence and we propose to retain the rough sleeper designated units in the borough. 
And may I remind everyone that the benefit cap is set at 26,000 per annum, equivalent to a household of 35,000. And even at this high amount, the council can make awards of discretionary housing payment to the most vulnerable households affected by the benefit cap. The introduction of the SSC and the benefit cap will pose significant challenges to this council, which is why a new group, the Welfare Reform Housing Overview Group, has been formed in order to minimise disruption and distress to our tenants. Seventy years on from Bedbridge, it's a conservative work and pension sector that is reclaiming his vision, learning from his political courage, understanding what has gone wrong in recent years, as well as what has worked. Britain is a very different country to 70 years ago. That's why social security has to change. But in rethinking the future, Bedbridge's first principles are the right place to begin. That's why tonight I'll not be supporting this motion. Uh, and now the other Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I think a lot of people in this uh, council chamber are probably aware that I work in the field of social housing professionally and have done so for some time. Um, you may not be aware that I have also worked in higher care housing, uh, quite often with staff funded through what is currently called supporting people finance. It's had a long history. Um, it came together eventually as the budget that was called Supporting People. But over the years, it's been called a number of other things. Some of the funding um, started in the Health Authority. Uh, it was also called Hostel Deficit Grant for a while. And then attempts were made to reform the budget. And it was called um, Special Needs Management Allowance before that transitional Special Needs Management Allowance. And it went through a number of iterations and finally came together as Supporting People pulling in the money from the Health Authority and from a number of local authority budgets and also from some central government budgets as well. And there were some of us who were involved in uh, these uh, very long-winded and uh, complex negotiations over pulling all these budgets together who did suggest that there were concerns in bringing it all together in one place. Because once you do bring something all together in one place, then there's only one place where you need to go if you want to reduce or cut it. So when supporting people was originally introduced, um, many of us in the profession had argued quite strenuously that there should be a ring fence put on that budget. And that was indeed the case. However, that ring fence has since been removed, and now we're in a situation where there's a desire to reduce the amount that we spend on some very vulnerable groups of people. One of the reasons for arguing for the ring fence is many of these people are not attractive groups of people uh, in and of themselves. And in our motion, paragraph 5, talks about cutting housing-related support services to some of the most vulnerable groups in the borough, including rough sleevers and those who are alcohol dependent. Supporting people funding has funded those groups. It's also funded some of the additional care for elderly people, people with learning disabilities, and one of the things that it has done is allowed the hospital closure program that took place uh, that was dubbed Care in the Community at the time. We've also closed a number of our hostels for a range of the different client groups funded through supporting people. So if we start renegotiating the contracts, remodeling the contracts, um, reducing the cost in the contracts, changing some of the premises altogether, there are some people who are in the community who are supported at the moment who are probably not capable really of staying in the community if they don't continue to get support. I would hope that if someone has become homeless and has developed alcohol or drug problems before or after that has happened and gone through some kind of family breakdown, that we're able to offer that support. But I'm worried that the impact of taking the ring fence off the supporting people budget and this kind of motion coming before this council is going to start implementing some of the things that I feared as the supporting people budget came together in one place rather than being scattered amongst a number of different departments and authorities. Most of you probably recognize the name of Jonathan Zito. His wife Jane Zito, after he was killed by someone who uh, had clinical mental health problems and other issues going on in their life, and was not being given sufficient support, set up a trust. My great fear is that we're going to return to that place 
we're going to find people on the street, they're not going to be getting the support that they should be. They will have other sticky labels, things going wrong from them in their life. And we're not really going to be helping them. And at the same time as cutting supporting people funding, we're doing that in the context of wanting to tackle the huge bill that, no, I'm afraid the other councillor, Cooper, is wrong. It's actually not a large housing benefit bill as a result of some labour intent between 97 and 2010. Who was the person who said, let housing benefit take the strain? Yes, he's back in the government right now. It was the bicycling baronet. It was Sir George Young in his previous iteration under Margaret Thatcher's government. He said some other things that were greatly attracted, uh, attracted a lot of attention to people who work in my field. One of them particularly being, beggars are the kind of people that you trip over as you come out of the opera. Well, cut supporting people, cut all these welfare benefits, and I suggest that not only Sir George Young, but an awful lot of other people are going to end up tripping over the beggars as they come out of the opera again. The issue that he was talking about when he said, let housing benefit take the strain, was the reduction of the funding to bricks and mortar. If you reduce the funding into bricks and mortar for people producing lower cost housing, the only other place where the subsidy can go, rather than going in just the once on the capital end, is to go in endlessly, endlessly on the revenue end. So George Young was wrong then, as was the government then, to say, let housing benefit take the strain. I think now that the bill has reached 20 billion, there is almost nobody, even in this room, who would disagree with that. Tackling it will not be easy. But cutting supporting people and at the same time going through an enormous reorganisation expecting people to move out of properties that they're under occupying, switching with people who are uh, overcrowded at the same time as cutting all of the welfare benefit bill and cutting housing benefit. This could be a recipe for disaster for all of us in this borough. I hope I am wrong. I hope that we do not end up with people with more people, many people around this borough, but I do fear that we may end up in that situation again as it used to be. Please support this motion. Thank you. Community of speaking tonight. Uh, it's of great value to me and at a time in an arena that's so full, uh, possibly with more people here to hear my full views than when it was transcribed by Councillor Hogg in the OSC meeting, rather surreptitiously to be used, and clearly, Mr. Mayor, not my full opinions either. But hey-ho, let me begin. I will, unfortunately, be repeating most of the things that have been said today, um, but I think I can apportion at blame. The phrase, pending disaster, that the opposition have used and ill-conceived welfare reforms were, in fact, a result of the actions of that last government, their government. If we take a look at the working age benefits, the cost of working age benefits from 1996 to 97 was 61 billion. The cost, of age, the cost of working age benefit from 2009 to 10 was 85 billion. That's a 38% 30, increase. On the housing budget, from 1996-7, 10.4 billion. And in 19, uh, 2009 to 2010, it was up to 14.2 billion, an increase of 40%. Now here in Wandsworth, with a microclism of the national picture, from 1997, 96-97, 96 and a half million pounds, rising up from, for 2009-2010 to 174 and a half million pounds. That is an increase of 81%, more than twice the national figure. So I ask, where is this pending disaster? And it has arrived here, and we are now having to deal with it. Where are the new residents coming from? Well, I can remember being in an estate agency and a gentleman walking in with all the confidence, confidence that one could muster and saying, I'm looking for a flat at £250 a week, as that is the maximum that the government will give me. I'm living at Peckham at the moment at £125 a week, but I thought I'd be rather better off in Hampstead. So, tenants arrive into these better areas and with the raise in the rental ceiling, they have stayed. More landlords getting wind of the DHSS process and the rent bill went up for the councils. Private landlords on some of our estates are getting 11 to 15 percent yields. Yields on the open market in London run at around 3 to 3.5 percent. 
This bill cannot and should not continue to grow. It is, not, it is only right that this government is capping the benefits, as it will give more people the choice to choose where they can live. Mr Mayor, is it fair that families on low pay are bringing in less than families on benefits? Even after the cap can equate to pre-tax earnings today as high as 35,000 is a very high income in anyone's term against an average wage of 26,000. This is about people having the choice and using those choices. This is indeed, this, this is where there is a need. <laughs> is there a need to stay in Queenstown, Battersea, Wandsworth? Often there is not. How many of us here and how many of our constituents are from different areas, even different countries? We have all used that choice. And Mr Mayor, the local housing, allow local housing allowance reforms were introduced. The, op the opposition had a scream up claiming that thousands would remain homeless and be moved out of the borough. And one of the councillors, I can remember, I'm not sure whom, had asked earlier in the year how many Wandsworth residents had been moved out of the borough. And it was our great leader that was able to answer none. It is, in fact, the private sector caseload from April until November has actually only gone up by 40, from 7,319 to 7,352. This is not down. And we did... And we did not send droves of residents out into the cold and frozen land, uh, wastelands. This was all hype to cover up the ruination of the system by that government. People are now have a choice to spend their benefits how and where they see fit. And today, Mr Mayor, to hear from Mr Osborne about the benefits cuts, the saving to the taxpayer of 105 million in 2014, rising to 260 million in the year 2018. But the move will mean that the gap between the rents, which have been rising at a faster rate than inflation, and the cash benefits to the poor will grow, which is why this government will soften the blow by giving back 30% of the savings. It will use this to uprate the LHR rates in areas where the rents are the highest. This will be of benefit to the tenants in high cost areas such as London. And Mr. Mayor, I must add of the utmost importance this cup does not, absolutely does not affect those who have achieved the age of the state pension credit, households in receipt of working tax credit, families in receipt of employment or support allowance with support components, or households where the claimant or partner or any child they are responsible for is in receipt of DLA. This benefit cap only applies to those of a working age. Thank you. Councillor Ellis. I too will uh, try to uh, be brief. Um, thank you, your uh, As has been uh, said uh, on a number of occasions, uh, we're currently spending around about £20 billion a year on housing benefit. Um, this compares to less than £10 billion when uh, Sir George Young encouraged people to take the strain and the strain was taken uh, for 13 years of the Labour government uh, uh, doing nothing at all about it uh, with the result that we are now currently in the position that we are in at the moment. Um, Councillor Hogg, um, I happen to agree with uh, who said uh, that uh, there should be a cap on, uh, on welfare benefits. I'm sure the rest of his group uh, will also agree with him on that. Um, one of the things that I didn't agree with that he happened to say actually was uh, that perhaps there should be a, a higher allowance uh, for areas like London. Um, as Councillor Nardelli said, uh, £500 a week actually grosses up to just under £35,000 uh, for a working family. Uh, the average um, income for working households on the uh, Winstanley and York Road estates is actually 33,280. So the 35,000 35, pound figure that uh, the government is suggesting for areas like that uh, is in fact in excess of what most working households are already uh, producing uh, uh, anyway. Um, indeed it's also higher than a, a job uh, vacancy that I happened to see advertised earlier this week and that's for a constituency organiser for Battersea Labour Party. Um, that particular uh, vacancy uh, is going at £25,000, so considerably lower than the, uh, the benefit cap. And, uh, and if anybody's interested in applying for it, uh, applications close on the 28th of December. And uh, one of the things you have to do is to outline a campaign to save a local police station threatened with closure um, on no more than one side of A4. 
can be interviewed by me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one thing I hope the new organiser uh, will do, actually, is to ensure that truthful statements are put on Labour websites. Uh, and one I would like to see actually removed is uh, the one that was put on the 30th of November, saying a thousand ones of families will be homeless this Christmas as cuts start to bite. Um, I don't believe that's remotely true. Uh, if the opposition do, perhaps they could come up with the uh, information to support that. Uh, I, I think this is a very spurious motion, uh, and I urge uh, everyone to vote against it. Um, Councillor Bilton. Political lunacy comes when you start believing your own polit party political propaganda. And uh, we have a party that believes the party political propaganda of two posh boys. And it's wrong and seriously wrong. And why it's wrong is because it affects their formula, their recipe for improvement. So when they have two major fantasies, the first being that a crisis affect, affects Athens, Rome, Lisbon, Dublin, is all Gordon's fault, then clearly they've got it wrong. This is an international crisis and not Gordon Brown. Failure of the analysis is that by ceasing to be Gordon Brown, you resolve the crisis, which is more or less Osborne's position. What you do is just cut and cut more and harder. Now what we've got as a result of those, thank you, what we've got as a result of those cuts, I'll come to in a minute. The second major fantasy is that all people on benefits are inclined towards fraud. It came out spectacularly in the Housing Committee. I realise that you probably didn't mean every single word, but it came out spectacularly. In a kind of Dickensian way. Send them back to the workhouse Despite the fact that there aren't any jobs, main problem with uh, uh, welfare to work isn't, the, isn't work to go to because we have an economic crisis. We have an economic crisis because we've cut, and we've cut demand. It's all about supply side on your side. In fact, the problem is demand, and we all know that. And it's being cut in every day, tonight. Various decisions we're going to be taking, not part of the government, will be cutting more demand as we're cutting away the base of the British economy. This cannot continue forever, and I don't think it will. I think there'll be real problems. Even I, a couple of years ago, when I was the only person in this chamber saying there's a double-dip recession, didn't really say there was going to be a triple-dip recession. But I wouldn't even put my money on it, nor would you if you were sensible, on there not being a quadruple dip recession. This party in government has no recipe for resolving the financial crisis. It's the worst performing economy in the OECD, apart from Italy. It's performing much worse than the United States, which didn't go for cutting in the same way. Now the consequence of this cutting is that the poor are taking the strain. Just let me remind you that on the 1st of April, just let me remind you on, on the 1st of April, about one dozen... Just let me remind you that on the 1st of April, about one dozen millionaires resident in this borough will be £100,000 a week better off. I say about a dozen because that's about the mathematical average. But once with being one of the richer areas of the country, it's probably rather more than a dozen. This is what's called taking the strain and sharing the burden. But actually, people on benefits are not scroungers. As we all know, most of people on benefits are working. They're poor and badly off because they've only got part-time jobs, because there's not enough full-time jobs around, and because some employers do not pay the minimum wage, and even some reputable employers like Wandsworth Council, do not pay 150 or so the London living wage. In addition, Councillor Nardelli, if you look at question 46, you'll see that this council has been selling off lots of its property, 6,000 properties of which, 6,000 are now privately rented. And on those properties, they are being let out at about 280% of council rents
And another question, the pack of uh, questions and answers show that we're using 31 of them with housing benefit associated that would have been, without Tory policies, would have been in the public sector. Mr. Mayor, the fraud we're talking about from local authority benefit fraud cases runs to 117 million. The fraud, we're 117 million. The fraud we're talking about when we get to tax evasion carried out by another group of people comes to over 10 billion. Just to resolve that and you've solved the housing benefit crisis in one go. My re recommendations finally, Mr. Mayor, are one, read the officers' papers on benefit reform with an open mind and not wearing azure glasses and you'll see they're flagging up a serious crisis and two, reverse the coming tax cuts for millionaires so that a bit of the money goes to the right places. The one weakness of our, our motion is that we don't actually attack the government, which is what you're going to have to do, because otherwise you're going to pay a very heavy political price. Not, I'm afraid, here, because uh, let's be realistic, but you're not going to win a seat in the North. You're not going to win a seat in Wales and Scotland. You will be in real trouble. Uh, the matter now before the Council is the motion on the agenda concerning welfare reform proposed by Councillor Leonie Cooper and seconded by Councillor Belton. Would you please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion? of the voting is 11 for the motion, 44 against, none abstaining, the motion is lost.